Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, O Lord Father. Thank you, Lord, once again we gather to your home, O Lord Father. Thank you, Master. Even though we are few in number, Lord Father, you search our heart, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the offering, O Lord Father. Thank you, Lord, you are continuously providing us, Master. Thank you, Lord, for your people sowing for your kingdom, O Lord Father. Each seed is important, Lord Father. And you will reward us, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you are continuously protecting our family members, loved ones, everyone, Lord Father. Because we know that we are coming soon, O Lord Father. And we have to prepare, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Father, Pastor, bringing your word, O Lord Father. Thank you, Lord, you speak in his heart, Lord Father. Each word from you, Lord Master. Give us your divine understanding, Master, that we can understand your word, Lord Father, and we go deeper in deeper in your word, O Lord Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. I submit this service into your mighty hand. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister. You know, today, I was not supposed to speak. I thought I was, I, when I had offered this and Sister Joy accepted, I was really, God, thank you. <laughs> for, reason, for some reason, I said, God, thank you. Because in my office, it has been, it has been really, really tough. And uh, I've been working late nights, early mornings and late nights. So now that has become a routine. And sometimes it gets a little uh, overwhelming on you. I'm sure people who are working, they know these days are tough. And uh, uh, so much of competition is there. And we need to put in that extra, and little more than the extra that we always do. We have to put in that. And sometimes it gets uh, on, 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 on your body. and. Sometimes, yeah, it's okay. So anyhow, so she, she when she said I was not well, I've been fine. Okay, don't worry. And all the time throughout the week, when she first sent a message that yes, I bring the word of God, and she was excited. She had already prepared for it. And then suddenly she said, No, I'm not feeling too well. This is happening. I'm like, relax, relax. I'm sorry. Every day I received, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, don't be so so. I mean, why are you apologizing so much time? Forget it. Don't worry. Your health comes first, and God will bless you. And then finally on Friday, this uh, mishap ha happened with, with her father, that uh, he collapsed. But thank God that uh, he was not alone, he was with, uh, with the helper. And the helper was uh, wise enough to call the ambulance and immediately she, he was took to uh, the hospital and he is recovering now. Continue to keep him in your prayer and continue to keep Sister Jai also in your prayer. So that's why I'm here to deliver your word and thank you Brother Rajiv that he also offered asked, are you sure, are you okay to bring the word of God? No, it's fine. God, it's not my word. Fine, we do the preparation, right? It's his word. He uses us as a vessel. So church, are you ready to receive the word of God? Yes. One person. Yes. Are you ready to receive the word of God? Yes. Amen. So last Sunday we could not meet together because of, of course, Typhoon and we had a Zoom service. And we looked upon, what did we look on? Do you remember? We looked upon following what it means to be following Jesus, right? We have our own interpretation. We are following Jesus. We are believers of Jesus. We follow Jesus, but there is a there is a, a different definition or different requirement given by Jesus Himself. If you are to follow Him, this is what you need to do, and that is what we looked at uh, on a, on a high level, and we also looked at uh, what it means for us to follow Jesus and what it meant for the for the first followers of Jesus, 12 disciples, right? What it meant for them and what they had to do. And then we looked at which, which passage? We looked at this passage, right? Mark 8 verse 34. Then Jesus called the crowd to him along with the disciples and what did he say? He said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And we looked, we studied this verse last Sunday and we saw that it's a choice. If, 
if, right, if anyone would want to come after me. So if you want to, if you have made a choice to go after, follow Jesus, then only these things apply. If you don't, no choice. God has given us free will. It is not a compulsion, it is not enforced by Jesus. And then we also look that in following Jesus, we have to deny ourselves. And we look, we, we, we try to understand what denying ourselves means. Today, we are going to look at what it means to, to carry the cross. I've gone too far, okay. What it means to carry the cross. Alright? But before that, I'll say a short prayer. Lord, we just want to submit this time into your hands, Lord, and ask for your will and way to be done. Lord, as I stand here to deliver your word, Lord, fill me with your spirit, so that every word, Lord, which comes out of my mouth would be from you, Lord, and for your people, Lord. As your people, including myself, listen to your word, Lord. Help us to understand it, absorb it, and Lord, meditate upon it and apply it in our lives, Lord. We want to follow you, Lord. So help us, Lord. In your name, Lord, we say, Amen. Amen. If anyone would come after me, what does he need to do? He must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Now tell me something. Um, I will say I'm not very tech savvy, okay? But I know that on the social network, we can follow each other, right? We can follow some certain group. Uh, I don't know, the blogs or uh, I don't know whether we subscribe to a YouTube channel or do we become followers of the channel, I don't know. But on media, I think we can be followers, right? Right? We can be followers. And I mean, I mean, do you have followers for yourself? I don't think, I, I don't know whether uh, I have any following. But following Jesus, following somebody, we, have, we do follow, right? Some of us do. Come on, church. Do you? We do. When I was young, I'm still young. No, no, I'm great. When I was younger, okay, then at that point of time, I, used, I was really a direct fan of uh, the musical group that time, pop group. I would really love Madonna. I was in love with Madonna. I loved Michael Jackson. In those times, of course, we didn't have media so much, but how do I use, we used to follow? We used to follow by, by that music. Any album which is released, we were the first to own it. Anything on the news for them, we, were, we, did, we needed to know. On the magazines, we needed to buy those magazines, monthly magazines, but with our pocket money. So we used to follow. I used to follow. And in terms of movies, I used to follow Amitabh Bachchan. I still follow him. Okay? I still follow Amitabh Bachchan. Creators. I used to follow creators, uh, Sunil Gavaskar couple, they were really a direct fan of them and I used to follow them. I'm sure all of you would be following somebody at some point of time in your life. Am I wrong in saying that? Come on church. Do you follow? Did you ever followed anybody? Yeah, some not, some no. Anyhow. <laughs> but here today we are looking at is what Jesus is saying. If we are required to follow Jesus, we have to take up his cross. Right? Take up his cross, deny ourselves and take up his cross. Now when we talk about the cross, okay? Now the cross to the to a person in the first century, the cross was not a very good thing. It was it, it had only one the cross had only one meaning. And only one meaning at all. I mean there was no other meaning at all. And that meaning was death by crucifixion and it was not a pleasant thing. It was the most gruesome death a person could ever have. Crucifixion was not invented by Romans. It was invented about 300 to 400 BC before Jesus Christ. So it was there. The Persians and the Babylonians, they were the people who invented crucifixion. Only thing is, the Romans used it extensively to show their power. So if you go into, let's say from Jerusalem, if you enter Jerusalem, okay, before you enter Jerusalem, at least two, three kilometers stretch, you will see only crosses and people hanging there, bodies hanging there. Why? It was a warning to the people who are coming into Jerusalem that this is Roman rule. You go against Roman rule, you rebel against Roman rule, 
this is what is going to happen. So instill a fear in their hearts. So obviously, for the people in those times, the cross was not a very good thing. It's the worst thing possible that could ever possibly be happened to a particular person. Nobody wanted to have it, right? Two thousand years later, today, now, we can see the crosses in, in churches. With the cro we can see the crosses in homes. We can see the crosses people wearing us as an ornament. And we can see this imprinted on, on t-shirts. We can see this in, in rock bands, groups. I mean, it is there, right? You, you find it everywhere. You find it everywhere. Today, that same cross has become a symbol of forgiveness, grace, and love. I mean, in those times, in the first century BC, just imagine if you are there, let's say you are there, and the cross is there, people are dying on the cross, and you're telling a person there, oh, this, is, this cross is a symbol of love. You will be on the cross then. They will put you on the cross. Okay, love, come, let me show you how much we love you. Now things have changed. And, and today, uh, I mean, if you look at what Jesus said, Jesus said, what did Jesus say? If you have to follow me, you must take up your cross and follow me. But before I look at what Jesus meant by saying take up your cross, I want you to look at what Jesus did not mean. Because there is, there is a misconception about taking up the cross, what it means. It, people think it means carrying a burden. You know, when I was young, again I'm saying I'm young, younger, okay? When I used to see this movie, especially Good Friday time, okay? Especially Good Friday, I used to feel oh, emotional, over emotional, over sentimental. God, I want to bear this cross which you are bearing. I want to hold this cross. I mean, that was my childhood. I was not mature enough to understand what Jesus was telling by carrying that cross. I just wanted what I, I wanted to share that burden. Oh, come on, Jesus' burden I am going to share. People would laugh at me. But I, this, so that was my, my desire to do that. Carrying a burden. Because that's what I thought. Oh, it must be heavy. I want to help Jesus in carrying that burden. And that is where we and many of us are wrong when we believe that taking up the cross means carrying a burden. It could be, I mean, carrying a burden throughout our lives. It could be a strained, rela a strained relationship. It could be a thankless job. It could be a sickness which is prolonged over a period of time and we are continuing with that. Most people interpret that cross to be taken as something they must carry throughout their lives and every difficulty, every challenge that comes, they say, oh, this is a cross I need to carry. No, that is not what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow me. You know, in some parts of the world, especially in Philippines, in Mexico, I think, what happens is every Good Friday, people actually carry, actually people carry the cross. Yeah, they carry the cross, go to a hill, and they get themselves nailed, nailed onto the cross. And then they come out. Next day, they are, they are, they are out of the cross. They don't die. But today, health, hygiene, all these things are there. So nobody gets uh, uh, sick after that. Yes, of course the pain is there. The, all those issues, things are there. And plus, they do not get beaten also. That Jesus was beaten. It's a little bit of some. You can see on you see videos on the YouTube. It's available. Some dashes here and there are there. Like some people have, have beaten them, but they enjoy. They they have the thrill of that. But that is not what Jesus was saying. You know, we have to be very careful when Jesus said, "Carry." your cross. What is Jesus saying? Carry your cross. Right? You see it here? He must carry his cross. So if you are following Jesus, you need to carry your cross. Jesus is not talking about carrying the cross that Jesus was bearing. Not that cross. Because if Jesus tells you to bear that cross, then the death of Jesus is in vain. It's in vain. He took on that cross, that cross which was meant for you and for me, so that you and me 
need not be nailed to that cross. And when Jesus was nailed to the cross, it was not only his body which was nailed to the cross, our sin was nailed to the cross. And Jesus would never want us to again bear that cross. That is why he said, not my cross, you take your cross. And you will try to understand what it means, taking your cross, our cross. Jesus' call to carry a cross and follow him is a call of self-sacrifice. Last Sunday, uh, whoever was there on the call, we looked at how the disciples, they were the first followers, right, of Jesus. When they followed Jesus, what sacrifices that they had to make? We looked at that and, no, fine, okay, that was the disciples. What about the early Christians? The early Christians in a Roman rule, fine, later on, the Roman rule basically accepted Christianity as their religion. Everyone what got converted to Christianity. But till that time, they were Romans. What kind of treatment did they give to the early Christians? So the early Christians, did they need to sacrifice something? I want to show you something here. And this I wanted to show you last Sunday, but since we all Zoom, so I did not. But today I want to show it to you. Are you okay? Five minutes. Can we switch on the light? If the light gets switched off. It's dangerous because you don't sleep, okay? Grow some light. This is from a clipping from the movie, very old movie, Kovalis. I don't know how many of you have seen this. But this is what the first people, the first followers, apart from the from the twelve disciples, these are the first Christians, these are the first followers of Jesus. This was their cross. This was nothing voluntary. This is not this this is something which they picked up themselves. You know, the Romans gave them a choice. You denounce Jesus, move away from Jesus, say he's not a God. He's a fraudulent, fraud person. Many people did that to save themselves. But these are the people who said, no, we have decided to follow, we sang that song today. We have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. And the cross they had to carry, this was the cross. This was their cross. That they, would be, they were willing to die for Jesus. Beloved, it is, a, it is a call from Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus' call. But he does not impose it upon ourselves. He makes it our decision. Ultimately, it is our decision whether we want to follow Jesus or not. Taking up the cross and following Jesus is voluntarily, not by compulsion. Beloved, taking up the cross means that I am voluntarily going to take it up for Jesus. Cross bearing is an act of love. An act of love that we choose to do it. We are not compelled to do it. We choose to do it. It is a task that we want to undertake and do it. It is a price that we are willing to pay. Are you getting it? A price that we are willing to pay. For Jesus, it meant taking on the cross for us. Why? Because he loved us so much. Taking up the cross, beloved, is an act of love and love only. And it means reaching out to the people who are unlovable. Unlovable meaning the from whom you cannot expect love in return. Forget about love. You cannot expect a word of appreciation, a word of thanks from them. They just expect from you. But the, but the Lord says, continue to love. Because the love from God is unconditional. If we have received it unconditionally, we are supposed to give unconditionally. Difficult. Because whenever we love, we have an expectations. We expect something in return. Okay, fine. Nothing in material. But we expect in return, a small thing is appreciation. Thank you. But when taking up the cross means we should not be ex expecting even that. Because when Jesus took on the cross, he did not start taking up this cross and expect you to repent. He, what he had to do, he did. He opened a door for us. 
I said, no, it is your choice. I'll open the door for you. The veil is broken. It's your choice. You want to come or you don't want to come. No hiding, no compulsion, no forcing you. Beloved, taking up the cross means taking up the love of God to the ends of the world, to touch the lives of people who are unlovable. To people who are lovable is easy to love, right? No issue, right? Come on, that's just a nice person, lovable person. We love that person, we go there and have a good time time together. That's, that's okay. The challenge comes when you are called to do it to the people who are unlovable. It means denying, sacrificing. It means paying the price regardless of the hardships, regardless of any returns in return. Beloved, whenever the message of cross was preached or is preached, people are not happy with that. People are uncomfortable. People object. I mean, if we look at the cross in the time, the first century BC, when Jesus was crucified, those were being crucified. People, if you if people used to talk about cross in the homes, the mothers would say, hey, come on. This is a bad woman. Don't talk about cross. Because it was a bad woman that time. Correct? Even the, when Jesus was there, when Jesus spoke to the disciples and said, and said I will be crucified. Did, did the disciples take it easily? No. Peter took Jesus aside and told him, Hey, what are you doing? He re Peter rebuked Jesus. The disciple rebuked the teacher. Why? Because cross, well, what are you saying? Jesus, you are going to the cross, you are dying. You are our saviour. You are here to save us. And you are talking about dying. Even when Jesus was entering Jerusalem, and he spoke about entering Jerusalem, and he knew that things are not going right. He wanted to enter Jerusalem so that he can go on to, the, to take on the cross. The disciples tried to discourage him. Why? Why do we need to go there? Beloved, today also, when we speak about taking on the cross, people still do not like it. Do not like it. Don't uh, mind me, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm saying this, my friends. Jesus' call about taking up the cross bothers us also, you and me also. It does. See, the intent is there. Don't, don't get me wrong. Okay? The intent is there. We want to do it. Okay? The desire is there. The fire is there. But something happens. So if I ask you, are you ready, sorry, are you willing to take on the, your cross to follow Jesus, don't respond. Because that's the immediate responsibility, yes, of course, we want to. But there's a price attached to it. I want you to think about these questions which I'm going to put across to you, okay? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your closest friends? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means alienation from your family? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your reputation? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your job? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your life? Following Jesus, friends, doesn't necessarily mean that when you when you come into it under His umbrella, everything will be fine with you. No, look at the disciples of Jesus. They were with Jesus, but they had to suffer. Are you willing to take up a cross for Jesus? And if face a choice, I mean, I'm not saying that all these things will happen to you, okay? I'm not saying that all these things will happen to you. But if a situation comes and this happens to you, then you have to make a choice. What will be your choice? Don't answer me. That's something which you need to think. What will be your choice? Don't get me wrong, friends, that I'm not, I'm not trying to demotivate you. I'm not trying to discourage you or I am not trying to instill fear in your hearts. What I am trying to tell you is your commitment to Jesus comes with a cost. Okay? It is like you have to invest today, right? Some of you, most of you would be investing today, right? Out of your savings, whatever you have, you invest for the future. That in the future you will get the reward. But for today it becomes your sacrifice. You pay tithes and offering. Tithes and offering, tithes is basically is what? is part of your salary, of your income which is going out for a reward in the future. Correct? Likewise, 
there is a reward in the future. And what I am trying to tell you is that your commitment, commitment to Jesus will not result in challenges not coming, but challenges will come. But even if the challenge is there, you will be victorious. You will be victorious. Beloved, what I am trying to make, what I am trying to do is to make you more comfortable and encourage to follow Jesus with all your heart and all your mind. You know, if you look into the, into the Bible in Luke 9, you will see there were three people who followed Jesus. Who came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you. In these so many passages, uh, Luke 9, Luke 9 uh, verses uh, 57 to 62, I will share that with you on the group. You will find it there that three people, one person came to Jesus and said, I want to follow you. But Jesus said, okay. He said, no, let me do first this, this thing. The second person, Jesus said, you, come on, you follow me. He said, okay, yes, I want to follow you, but let me do that thing first. And the third person did the same thing. They wanted to follow Jesus, but they have other priorities. They want to do things before, first, and then come to Jesus later on. I don't want us to be like those people. Or, or to be like the young uh, rich ruler who came to Jesus with everything. He was a righteous person, self-righteous person. But when he asked Jesus for eternal life, and Jesus gave him the way, he went back. He went back. Let me ask you once again, friends. Would you like to follow Jesus in the manner Jesus wants us to? Would you like to follow Jesus in the manner Jesus wants us to? I hope and pray your answer in your heart is yes. I want to do it, but how do I do it? That's a valid question. The only thing which you need is to do to be able to do this is faith. It's as simple as faith. Faith in Jesus. Not the size of a truck, the size of a mustard seed. And we have spoken about that. Size of a mustard seed. Let me give you three points here. Okay? How these three points can help you. Believe in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. That's the first thing. Believe in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. See, no one who has ever lived has done what Jesus did for us on the cross. The Lord himself, okay? King of kings, Lord of lords, creator of heaven and earth, everything. Huh? The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He left his heavenly abode for us. Came down on earth to be born as a small child in a stable. Not in, in the palaces. In the stable. Lived a very common person's life. And died also that way. The most horrible death a man could ever have. He suffered that. He took it upon himself just for us. You know friends, when he was on the cross, he spoke some words, right? Seven words. Do you remember that? We always have it on Good Friday. The seven words of Jesus from the cross. There are two words which always are in my mind. And I've been thinking, I always think about those two words. But of course, I'm sure that is common for all of us. Then when he forgave the others, right? Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. How could God, Jesus, ask for forgiveness for the people who were killing him? But he did. And the second thing is, I thirst. I mean, for me, this is something which I thirst. Jesus was thirsty. Who is Jesus? Jesus, Son of God. Jesus, God himself. Jesus, who has created the water, he's created the seas, he's created the rain, he's created the clouds. He was himself thirsty. Just, I mean, just imagine it. He who opens the well of living water for us, he was thirsty. When you go home, think about this. Jesus was thirsty. Jesus had everything at his disposal. The clouds were there, right? He was a rain, come down. Wet me, wet, wet my tongue. No, he did not say anything like that. He just said, I thirst. I thirst. Beloved, focus, focusing on the Lord's sacrifice strengthens our faith. The more we focus on what Jesus has done for us, the more we will be able to see that we can trust him. Have faith 
that if you take up your cross and follow Jesus, remember uh, this question which I put across? Hmm? The challenges? Are you willing to follow Jesus even if it means losing your closest friend, your, your family? And let me tell you something very clearly here. If you have faith and if you take up the cross and follow Jesus, your closest friends, your family members will not only understand and acknowledge your faith, but they will one day be with you standing in your faith. That is the blood truth of it. It will happen and we have seen it happen in many, many homes. It will happen. If you take up the cross and follow Jesus, the people, your friends, your family, who have today alienated you from, from say, oh, he, this person is following a different religion. He has a different, this person has a different mindset. Alienated you, discarded you. One day they will acknowledge your faith. One day they will stand with you to worship the true living God. Same thing will, with reputation. What kind of a reputation do we carry? Our reputation is bigger or God's reputation is bigger? If He is glorified and through our work, we are glorified. Say we are for losing job. Losing job. I lost my job. 18 months there was no salary. Who paid my rent? Who paid the children's fees? International school fees? Who paid the groceries? God provides. If we are willing to take up the cross and follow Jesus, and lastly, with regards to life, you know in Matthew 16 verses 25-26 it is written there, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. The words of Jesus. Second point which I want to put bring across to you is, Believe in what Jesus has done for you when he answered your prayers. You know, really, we are very quick. God, we have seen God answering our prayer. We come here and give testimonies about God's goodness and life. You know what God did? God did this, God did that. But when the challenge comes up in our home, the first thing is we forget to pray. What should be our first thing? We put it at the last, as a last resort. Oh, nothing is happening, nothing. Let's pray to God. Come on, bring that first. Bring God first in the picture and see how the Lord changes everything. Remember the, uh, the time when Jesus and his disciples were in the boat and, and the, uh, the storm came? Remember that story? No, remember this thing that Jesus was in the boat with them and still the disciples panicked and they woke him up and, and said, Jesus, Jesus, we are perishing, save us. And Jesus arose and he rebuked the wind and everything was calm. These followers were hit by a savage storm. That reminds us, friends, we may also be hit by a storm. The other thing which you need to note is, Jesus was in, in the boat with them. So even if you are close to Jesus or Jesus is close to you, doesn't mean that you will not face a storm. You will face a storm. Only thing what we need to do is, whenever we face a storm, we need to cry out to Jesus, Jesus help me! And Jesus will intervene. He will arise and calm the storm. Do you believe that? He will. And we have seen that happening in our lives. That should give us faith. Oh, he did that in the past. He will do it now also. Because he is the same God. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. He continues to love us. Right? Third point. Last point. Nothing can take away us, take us away from his love. Two verses. I'm just given. I'm not going to speak about this. Only two verses. What are the two verses? Can anybody read? Read. Anybody? My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, so they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. No one can snatch who? You and me. From whose hand? From the hand of Jesus. And he spoke about the Father, he, and, and of the verse he says, 
the Father and I are same. Let's look at another verse here, okay? Romans 8, verse 35 to 38, 39. Can somebody read it? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things we are more than con conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Just imagine, just think for a while. What can separate us from God? Except for us, huh? we can move away from God. From, from God's perspective, nothing. Nothing. That should give us motivation, encouragement to have more faith in Jesus. I may move away. My son may move away. My wife may move away. My mother may move away. My father may move away. From me, my God will not move away from me unless until I move away from God. What more do we need? What more do we need? Beloved, as I close my message for today, I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 13, okay? And verses 4 to verses 7, verses 8, okay? I'm going to put it on the cross and I want us all of us to read it. Okay, starting now. One, two, three. Love is patience. Love is Amen to that? Now I'll do something here. Okay? I'm going to remove the word love from this passage. Okay? I'm going to remove the love, the word love from this passage, love and it. Any reference, okay, to love. I'm going to remove it and I'm going to put in place who are you? Who do you want to be? Follower of Christ? Right? You want to be a follower of Christ or not? I want to replace it with follow of Christ. Now read it. That's all. All of us read it. Follow of Christ. 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 Amen. Amen to that? Amen. So if you are a follower of, you are a follower of Christ and when you are willing to take up the cross of Jesus, this is what we need to do. This is what it means. To be a follower of Christ. Are you getting it? Church? Now, I'm going to remove the word follower. I want you to put your name there. You don't have to say it loudly. But say it. Ashish is patient. Ashish is kind of. That's a question to you also. Am I kind? Am I patient when I am saying these words? Because these are the definitions, these are the requirements of being a follower of Christ. Okay? So just, I move away, put your name there and question yourself. Are you that person?
May I ask you to stand, please? Beloved, this, beloved, this is my prayer for you today. This is my prayer for you today. That when we take up the cross, when we deny ourselves, take up the cross and have decided to follow Jesus, then these values will be instilled in our hearts. Let's sing this song.
Yes, our Father Lord, as we move ahead towards you, Lord Jesus. Help us to fulfill, Lord, your purposes in our life, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. No turning back, Lord, no turning back, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Let's say the Lord's prayer together. Starting now. Our Father, and we will also read second Corinthians 30 14 with the grace of the Lord Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time of being in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the people who were able to come today, Lord. Our Father, Lord, the people who were not able to come, Lord, we intercede for them and ask you, Lord, bless them wherever they are. Lord, whatever they need, Lord, you fulfill them, Lord Jesus. You supply to them, Lord. You give them good health, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we go back our ways, our Father, Lord, our homes, wherever, Lord, we need, where we need to go, Lord, you be with us, Lord, throughout this week, Lord. Bless us and keep us safe and protected, Lord. And Lord, next Sunday, Lord, as we will meeting together in Taipo, Lord, Lord, help us to be there, Lord, Lord, together, Lord, and be able to, Lord, celebrate you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just are going into fellowship, Lord. Whatever the snacks which have been presented to today, Lord, we thank you for our brother Kamal, Lord, that he has blessed us with the snacks, Lord, that those were we could to our bodies, Lord Jesus. Lord, we bless the snacks, we bless the common Lord, and we bless all the people here, Lord Jesus. In your name, Lord, we say, Amen, Amen, Amen. So, God bless you all. Have a wonderful and safe week ahead. God bless you.